Hello there, my name is Ismaus and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial mm -hmm. and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how uh, to set up a scene like this. Basically, a uh, flow collapsing in on itself. One of the hardest things to do in Blender is fracturing elements in a controlled uh, fashion. For example, uh, what we have here, uh, we have a crack uh, that is spreading from left uh, to right, as you can see, and now uh, we have the different elements or different blocks collapsing. Uh, this can be tricky to do. I've been experimenting a lot and couldn't find an easier way to do it until I did some scripting to get it to work the way I wanted. The scripting doesn't do a lot. Uh, it's just connecting a few elements that I need to connect. So if you look at uh, these uh, fracture elements, which I fractured using the cell fracture uh, add-on, you can just enable that in the uh, preferences. So what it's doing, uh, we have these are fractures which are just rigid body objects uh, if we go to the rigid body system you can see it's a rigid body of type active but uh, it has the dynamic setting turned off for now what the dynamic setting does it enables and disables physics so right now it's disabled uh, meaning that this brick would not move until it's enabled now you can see it should start falling the way i enable these dynamic elements because it's very hard to animate this element uh, by hand and uh, since we have almost 400 pieces here to enable these this dynamic effect on queue i added a distance uh, driver let me just expose my drivers here driver editor just select this hit n and i should expose my drivers here so you can see that uh, it's a script expression uh, driver so and what it does it it checks at the distance, let me just isolate one of these. It checks the distance between uh, this empty and uh, this uh, piece. If that distance is greater than, let me get my drivers again. Okay. If that piece, if that distance is greater than 0 0.3, uh, then it will set uh, the dynamic value here. So as you can see, we have quite a lot of pieces. That just to be exact, you can see that uh, we have around 466 uh, pieces uh, that need to be connected uh, to a driver and uh, assigned a driver object. You can't do this by hand. So I went uh, into scripting and, and created a Python script uh, to do that work for me. So let's go through the script and uh, just look at how it's working. So first of all, you import uh, BPY, which is Blender Python. And uh, I'm just adding this count. Just a feedback to show you that uh, something is working in the background. So each of these pieces is in a collection called X2 here. And uh, so what we are doing here in this for loop, uh, we are going inside that uh, collection and uh, just go iterating through each of the objects we have, uh, which are 400, about 466 pieces. So for each of these pieces, uh, Blender is going there and uh, finding the position of that piece, say for example this piece, and uh, creating an empty, creating an empty uh, with this line here, and assigning the location of uh, this piece uh, to this empty. So you can see that uh, each empty we have in the scene is at the exact position of its connected uh, object. And now uh, what we're doing at uh, line three, this is uh, this line here is just a continuation of uh, the other line. Let me just expand this so that we can see that. Uh, so on line six, what is happening is that uh, we're just getting this empty. Uh, the empty we have just created at line five and they're giving it a name, uh, the same name as its connected pieces, uh, its uh, piece, and uh, just adding a prefix of control just to make it a bit different. And uh, if you select the empty, you can see that uh, it carries the name control plane 001 cell 19 and uh, this piece has uh, so should all the other pieces with their respective empties and after that i'm adding a constraint uh, to this uh, to this uh, empty if you go to the constraint you can see i'm adding a constraint here a shrink wrap constraint and uh, the target for that shrink wrap constraint is this uh, mesh here share because remember the way we are activating the dynamic uh, setting here is by moving these arrows a distance greater than 0 
uh, like we said in the in the expression uh, we should be around here so so to do that I'm um, using this shrink wrap uh, to kind of move uh, the empties away from the from their set objects uh, so that we get that distance that distance are uh, to activate uh, the dynamic property and then from there uh, you are applying uh, this is just printing out uh, each of these elements uh, so that you can see so that you get visual feedback that uh, the script is still working in the background and then we have ah so after we add the empty and uh, give it a constraint uh, constraint a shrink wrap constraint attached to uh, this uh, this uh, plane uh, we select we, we select this uh, the respective uh, block and give it a driver assign a driver to it so assign a driver to its uh, dynamic setting here uh, which can be accessed under so whenever you see i i'm just referring to any of these uh, bricks uh, as this is a loop it's just looping through each of these blocks uh, so i is just for it's just a placeholder for block one and then this, the entire script runs and then goes to block two block three block four uh, like that so assume that this is block one so we are adding a rigid body uh this is this dynamic setting is referred to as rigid body in using python python so i'm, uh, so I'm just accessing it here and adding a driver to it uh so which is let's say uh this here so i've added this driver and you can see uh, the type of that uh, driver is a scripted uh, expression i'm accessing this uh option here setting the type to uh, scripted i uh, using this here and uh, then creating a new variable which is basically the same as uh, clicking on this input value uh, so when you click on uh, this is the equivalent of just doing this so i'm just adding a new variable and uh, changing the variable type uh, to location distance so so it's the same as clicking on this and uh, clicking on location distance if you look at uh, this area here you, you will also see that if i switch be between these you can see their names are uh, their python names so if i go back to distance you can see that it's called a uh, location distance uh, so that's what i'm doing i'm switching uh, this uh, type uh, to location distance just so i can get uh, the distance between uh, the object uh, the actual object and uh, the corresponding empty and uh, so i need to first set the objects the target objects target here and uh, because we have two targets uh, target one is going to be a uh, variable the targets are uh, zero and then accessing its id and setting it uh, to bpy context object when you add an object in blender for example if i add a cube uh, that that object you add becomes uh, the context object so since while running the script we added these empties uh, that the empty is still uh, the uh, the context object so now what we are doing here is just assigning let's see assigning object one as a con as the context object and then target 2 is just uh, the actual target itself so i'm just using i uh, since i is the object itself uh, that we are iterating through and uh, then uh, this this line here is just for this expression here setting this expression it's a very very simple script and uh, for it to work you need to have a few things uh the first thing you need to have is that uh, you need to have uh these pieces in a collection called x2 uh, if you want to change uh, the collection a different name you would have to come into the script and uh, look at any areas where you see x2 and change uh, that to whatever name you want to use maybe i'll do i'll create a user interface for that uh, so that it's easier for you to to work with yes yeah, so thank you for watching if you want to see the project files i'll have them on my patreon page uh, so that you can examine the project and uh, see how i did that